So welcome to this complete course in Windows Server Administration. It will be a complete course, simpl uh, simplified series by me, and it's going to cover how to set up virtual machines, install Windows Server, create and configure domain controller, configure DNS, join computers to domain, create domain user accounts, configure failover cluster, remotely manage computers from your domain controller. So this is the setup I want us to use. And if you go this way, you see that I expect that you have VirtualBox or VMware uh, installed in your system. So we're actually going to be downloading Windows and installing as Visual Machines. So this is the setup we are going to be using. We are going to be installing Windows 10 uh, in one of the nodes. And then this is going to be Windows Server 2019, actually three Windows Server 2019 and one Windows 10. So I will expect you to be with me, stick with me throughout this lesson, because after now you should be able to write a Windows Server administration exam, be able to set up Windows Server uh, domain controller, set up the systems, be able to manage uh, computers on the domain. And this will be very easy for you. I'm going to break it down. Again, if you want kind of the step-by-steps, it's right here on my website as well, although it's kind of scaled down. So if you go to kindsonthegenius.com, uh, you can always find my website. So uh, that is my website, I mean, kindsonthegenius, and you can simply uh, get into my website. <clears throat> Let's wait for a second. While we are waiting, I would like to remind you to subscribe to my channel. If you've not subscribed to my channel, please, hit on this subscribe button below. In that way, you don't miss any update from me. And also, if you have any questions following any of my lessons, uh, I will always be there to help you as well. So this is what we are going to be doing today, although this is a part two, but you can always find the part one. All right, so let's go ahead to get started. So let me put away this in the second screen. So. So maybe you can just copy down this or maybe draw it out in a sheet of paper so that this you have in mind that this is what we are going to be doing. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to take out this PowerPoint because this is just a PowerPoint presentation, so I'm taking it out. So if you don't have VirtualBox, you can actually go to the browser. Permit me to also take out this uh, uh, as, uh, internet browser so basically you should go to our internet explorer just give me one second so i'm going to move this back and open a tab and type virtual box download virtual box now uh runs both on windows and on mac so i'm running it on mac so if you have uh, Windows, you can also download and install VirtualBox and be able to follow this lesson. So it runs on Windows, on Mac, and on Linux distributions. So what we are going to do, uh, sorry, let me get back here. So have it installed, and the next thing we are going to be doing now is to download and install uh, Windows. So if you go to Microsoft Windows, Windows Server 2019 download. Windows Server 2019 uh, downloads. Just put download right there. So you can actually go straight to get the file. Now, if you go to Windows Server 2019 download, you have about three different options to download. So you can see it right here. You can also find the link straight to this page right from my website. You have Azure, you have uh, ISO, you have VHD. The one you are going to download will be the ISO. So when you download the ISO, that will be uh, good. So uh, I'm going to enter all of these and then... All right, so my download have started right now. So this is Windows Server 2019 downloading. And the next thing we are going to be downloading is Windows 10. So I'm going to also go to Windows 10 downloads, Windows 10 download. Now we can also get Windows 10 uh, to use for about uh, 90 days or thereabouts. So let's see. So the addition, we want uh, Windows 10, confirm, 
and it takes us to this place. So I think I'm going to choose English and confirm as well. So the link expires. Okay, so I'm going to download Windows 10 64 bits. So it looks like the download completed successfully. So let me just close the this windows and I'm going to go to the download folder. Um, so let's see. So I think I'll have to do this. So in the download folder, you have these two items. I'm going to actually copy them and place them inside the folder. So I'm going to copy the two items and uh, just change this view to something else and maybe create a folder. <coughs> I'll create a folder somewhere, let's say at home. Uh, okay, yeah, let me create a folder here and put them. So I'm going to call it ISOs. Windows ISOs, okay. So I'm going to place the two downloads in here. So I'm going to paste. Okay. So let me rename them. So it's, I'm going to avoid some kind of confusion because you can see how the name looks like. Uh, how about Windows 10? How about calling this Windows Server 2019 and I call this one Windows 10 and is actually 64 bit as well. <coughs> okay. So this Windows ISOs permit me to just uh, copy it and put it right in my document. I think it's going to be easier for me uh, from my documents. All right, so Windows ISOs is right in my documents and in my download uh, folder, I'm going to delete them. So let me just delete them uh, from here, from my downloads. And also I think I have them in home as well. Let me just do the cleanup uh, so that I can just continue. So I have it, I have it in my, okay. So let's say, I think I've already cleaned this, cleaned up. Uh, the, uh, okay, so here I'm going to clean, clean up. All right, so I have in my documents, uh, Windows ISOs. If I go to date modified, I think I should have Windows ISOs right there. Let's see. So you can see, I think it's down, down. So let's see, let me just do this. So you can see Windows ISOs. If I open it, you can see the two of them. All right, so let's now go to VisualBox. So I'm going to VisualBox and I'm going to say new. I'm going to create a new virtual machine. I'm going to call this one Node 1. Node 1 is going to be Windows is going to be my domain controller, sorry. So let me call it DC. So the first one is gonna be DC, is going to be DC, and it's going to be Windows, Microsoft Windows, and it's going to be Windows Server 2019 64 bit. And so here is fine. So I'm going to click on continue. Um, I think I should leave it at two gig for now. I'm going next, so create a virtual hard disk is trying to give a name um, okay so i'm going to say create vhd virtual uh, hard disk yes visual box disk image dynamically allocated is okay so i think i should use uh, 50 should be fine or maybe since it's my domain controller maybe I can use 60 gig and say create so once you've created it it's powered off um, so I'm going to maybe create other nodes and later on I'm going to power them on at the same time so I'm going to click on new and this time I'm going to create node 1 node 1 and it's also going to be Windows Server 2019 as well. So it's going to be this. And how about using capital letters nodes one like this. Continue the same, the same. Uh, yes, visual box disk image next. And let's leave it at 50 gig and that is fine. 
So we are going to go ahead to create node two. It's going to be Windows 2019 as well. So I'm going to click on continue. Everything should just be the same. And finally, okay, so we are we're also going to create node three because we mentioned that we are going to have three nodes that's going to be running Windows Server and then we are going to also have a fourth node that is going to be running Windows 10. So I'm going to click, uh, okay, this should be fine, okay. And finally, the last node that is going to run Windows, uh, I'm clicking on Start. Okay, now this is important, I've clicked on Start. So let me show you the start window. Um, for some reason, the start windows doesn't show up in this screen. So now we click on the visual machine and we click on the start button. And the nice thing we want to do at this point is to select the ISO file we downloaded and the first the first file we want to select is the Windows Server 2019. So we are going to click on Add Disk Image. So you see this uh, icon with a plus sign. We are going to click on it to, to, to select the disk image we downloaded. And I actually had these uh, ISOs in a different folder, but let's use the one we downloaded in this folder called uh, Windows ISO. So once you select it and you say open and just click on choose and at that point you should uh, be able to have the windows uh, starting. So once it starts running, it simply goes uh, the normal way you install an operating system. So I will allow this, I will kind of install the uh, windows and then uh, once it starts installing, I'll simply uh, allow it to complete. So do the same thing for all other nodes. Uh, uh, install Windows and all other nodes. For me, I'm gonna just complete this installation. I'm going to also install in all the four nodes and then uh, I come back. So for, for now, let me pause the video and complete all the installation and hopefully you should do the same thing as well. If you have problem or any challenges, uh, you can let me know. We have set up all the computers. So this is node uh, one, as you can see here. And this is node two, as you can see, this is node three, and this is node four uh, running uh, Windows uh, 10. So you can see, um, let me see, Windows 10, as you can see, and other Windows is Windows Server 2019, as you can see right here. So we've set up all the virtual machines. Now, the next thing we want to do is to set up the domain controller. That is the next thing we are going to do at this point. So this is my domain controller. Um, so this is it, and this is fine. Uh, what I would like to do at this point is to um, uh, go to, so to set up a domain controller in this computer, so you have to go to start and go to server manager right here. And we are going to add the Active Directory Domain Services role. So let me close this first. So wait for a couple of seconds. We are going to add Active Directory Domain Services role. So we are going to go to Add Roles or Features. Go to Next. And uh, click on Next as well. Now you have this computer name. I would like to change this computer name to DC first. So I'm going to I'll go to change this computer name to DC. So I'm going to this PC and go to C. Properties and go to change here and change the name to DC. So I like the name to be DC, All right? Okay, perfect. So, so we actually need to restart for this to take effect. So I'm gonna restart right now. And after restarting, we are going to add 
Active Directory Domain Services and also we are going to add DHCP services as well. So it restarts uh, quite fast. So I'm going to enter my password. All right, so we go, we go to the server manager dashboard and go to add roles and features, go to next, next and next. Now you need to choose Active Directory Domain Services, which is Active Directory Domain Services. So I'm going to click on it, add features. Now there are other two features I would like to add. I would like to add DNS as well as DHCP. So let me add DNS, say validation process found pro uh, problem. So let's hold on with DHCP for now. So let's install DNS no static IP as well. Okay, so let's go ahead to configure static IP. So I'm going to right click here and go to open network settings and go to first, I'm going, I'm going to check the status. Ah, there's something we need to do first. Now, if you have computers on visual machine that has to be on the same network, then you are going to change the network settings to use bridged network. So you're actually going to come here and change to bridged adapter. So that, that means that the, the, the guest operating system will not be on an internal, will not be, uh, uh, be on a private network inside the host. If you, if you leave it in NAT, it means that the guest operation will be kind of imprisoned inside the host on a subnet inside the host, under the host. But what we want is for the guest operating system, these visual machines, to be able to communicate with other visual machines outside the host operating system. So that way, you are in that case, you are going to use breed adapter and going to do the same thing for all of them. All right, so we've configured a uh, bridge adapter for this, uh, for our computer, uh, for our domain controller and for other computers on the network. So let's get back to the domain controller, which is this one. And yes, we are gonna click yes. I think we should do the same thing for other computers as well. So I'm gonna click yes here and every other one, all right. So, for now, let's install Active Directory Domain Services. I'm going to click on Next and click on Next as well. And Next, install. Now we need a static IP address. Now I need to check on my local network to get a static IP address to use. So Active Directory Domain Services installed successfully. I'm going to simply restart the system. But before we restart, we are going to come here. So you can see right here, it says promote this server to a domain controller. So that's what you are going to do. So for you to make this computer a domain controller, you are going to first um, select deployment, add domain controller to existing domain, add a new uh, domain to existing forest, or add a new forest. For now, we don't have a forest, we don't have a domain, so leave it at add a forest. Specify the information for this operation. Uh, so I'm going to call this ktg.local. That should be the domain name. Normally, if you are using a local domain on your computer, you can you normally add .local. So that's a convention. Um, so here you can just leave it uh, the way it is. You actually do need um, domain name server, specify the domain controller capabilities. Um, so here we can just enter passwords. And click on next. A delegation for this DNS cannot be created because the authoritative parent zone cannot be found. All right, so what we need to do first, I'm going to a bot and we need to actually um, 
assign a static IP address to this computer. So let's abort this for now. So I'm going to go to the IP address. I'm going to go to network settings and I'm going to go to Ethernet and change adapter options. And I'm going to right click on this and go to properties. Now you need to pay attention here. We, are, we need to disable IP version 6 and we are going to configure IP version 4. Okay, so uh, the IP address for this computer is going to be 192.168.1 Sorry, it's not typing. 192.168.1 now if you look at this assignment you see that uh see ip ip version ip address so don't worry about this i think i will check on my um access point and see if i can get a free an ip address let me see give me a second all right so i think i can use 192.168.1. Let me see, start with uh, 101, 101. So this IP address is free on my network and this is fine. The default gateway is going to be 192.168.1.1. So basically, dot one dot one. So basically the gateway for uh, the gateway for other systems are, which is your access point which is assigning these uh, IPs is what is going to be the gateway for the DR for the DNS. Now the, the address for the DNS is going to be the IP address of this computer as well because this computer now is going to be the DNS. So I'm going to say one nine to 168.1.101 all right i could actually just make it 100 so uh, it would be easy to remember that this is our uh, uh the, the uh, domain controller which is also the dns server and we're also going to use it as a dhcp as well so i'm going to say okay i'm going to say close and now it shows uh, network down, uh, but it's going to only show this uh, temporarily. So uh, status, uh, this is fine. There is no problem with this. I think it's fine. So, but I'm just going to check one more time. IP version four. Uh, DNS. Let's just check for DNS here. DNS is one nine two one six eight dot one dot one. Yeah, so this is okay. So at this point, we can go ahead to add, uh, to promote this computer to a domain controller from here. So I'm gonna say, uh, promote to domain controller, add a new forest. The root domain is ktg.local. And you are going to go next. So at this point, we hope uh, it will work out fine. So, um, so it takes for a, yeah a few seconds. So I'm going to enter a password. Next, so delegation for DNS. So I'm going to say um, next. So I'm going to actually ignore this as well. Next. And next, and finally, next. So it says if you click install, the server automatically reboots at the end of the promotion operation. That is fine. Okay, so it says all prerequisite check passed successfully, so install. So I'm going to click on install. 
So to be able to allow my client's computers to connect to this system, I'm going to kind of turn off the firewall because this is a demo. Uh, in production environment, you probably uh, will allow the firewall to remain, to, to be configured uh, to allow uh, connections from your local network uh, maybe other other security com uh, configuration will be made but for now I'm just going to turn off the firewall completely so you can see that the network is perfectly okay I'm going to close so it's going to actually restart the system I think so yeah so it restarts and that is fine now we are building the domain controller uh, after which we now have to join computers to the domain controller All right so the system restarts and I'm going to enter my so you can see now once you make a system to be the domain controller you now have to log in uh, to the domain so I'm going to use my password Voila, we now have a domain controller working perfectly. How do I know if I go to tools, I can actually now see Active Directory users and computers right here. Uh, let me let me start by closing this. It takes a couple of seconds. Let's just wait for a second. All right, so you see this uh, Active Directory snapping tool uh, right here. You can see it says ktg.local. If we go to computers, for now, we don't have computers. In a, in a, in a minute, we are going to be adding these computers. Uh, these computers, we are going to be adding it, and you will be able to see it right here. Okay, great. And now let's see. Let's go to we have the dns now we want to make this system a dhcp as well so i'm going to go to add draw some features and go next so keep in mind we are installing first active directory domain services which is this adds we also added dns so that the computer names in the network and can be resolved uh, from the ip address and then we are adding dhcp now so I'm going next, so you can see this is installed. I'm going to say DHCP, add features, and next. Normally I like uh, leaving this .NET Framework uh, 3.5. And I'm going next as well, and then next. Uh, you need to specify alternate. Do you need to specify alternate path missing source files and destination? The server will try to get source files from Windows Update. So this does not matter. So let's just uh, go next. So the installation for DHCP complete. <coughs> so you have this uh, complete configuration. Now, let me just explain to you why we need DHCP right here. If we don't use DHCP here, then it means that the IP addresses for the client is going to be assigned by my access point. That is the Wi-Fi here in my studio and that will be difficult to keep track of the IP addresses uh, on your local network. So it's better that we have the IP addresses of these computers on this small network managed by uh, internally by the domain controller uh, DHCP services. So here I say the following steps will be performed. Create the following security groups. Uh, the DHCP administrators, the DHCP users, authorize the DHCP server on target computers if domain join so basically it's saying that once a domain when a computer is joined to this domain this dhcp server will be able to manage that computer as well so i'm going to go next use the following credentials this is fine uh ktg administrator um yeah um yeah so let's let's keep it simple so let's use the defaults this is fine i'm going to say close okay perfect I'm going to close as well. Now, I would like to take a look. I think we need to restart. Uh, installation succeeded, installation succeeded. I think we need to restart, but let's first take a look at the... Um, 
okay we never created any user uh, but let's just take a look at the active directory users and computers and if i go to users uh, here i think there is nothing to check okay everything should be fine okay you can see dhcp administrators dhcp users uh, so have dhcp accounts uh, that will be able to manage the computers on the network and these are dhcp users uh, members of of the users of the local computers of the network so for now we don't have any computer on this uh joining this this uh, domain all right so just to be on the safe side i will like to uh let me make sure everything is running this is running this is running this is running this is running perfectly well great if i check the services that is not running so we say download map so we don't need it and this one as well maps is okay all right so you see let's start joining the computers to the domain i would like to start from node one so now to start from node one uh first we are going to change the network configuration to be able to see the dhcp server as the preferred dns server of course that dhcp server which is our domain controller is also the dns server so i'm going to go to ethernet and change adapter options and right click on this place and say properties here i'm going to switch off ip version 6 and configure ip version 4. now the ip address is going to come automatically from the dns which is what we configured the DNS server IP address should be coming from here. So here we have the DNS server IP address. Now, this is not up to date. I'm going to uh, kind of refresh it. So let's go to, let's refresh it by uh, rerunning the snap, the snap, the, the snapping tool. So I'm going to say apply. So you can see everything changes. We have the domain, we have the domain, the logon server, we have the uh, the DNS server, which is its own DNS server. But now we need to use this computer's IP address as DNS server for the clients. So this computer's IP address is 192.168.1.100. So I'm going to come here in my node one. I'm going to say 192 dot one six eight dot one dot hundred ah it's not <laughs> typing this is very funny one nine two dot one six eight dot one dot one hundred and this now will make it that this computer is going to connect to the dns which we configured and obtain an ip address because the dhcp which means dynamic host configuration protocol is running there so i'm going to say okay and I'm going to say close and this should refresh so you uh, permit me to run the snapping tool again so I normally like this to always refresh so if I apply you can see that everything changed you can see DNS server changed at this point okay so the next thing we want to do we want to join this computer to the domain permit me to also ping the domain controller so if i go cmd i can say ping dc and it's returning so the dc which is the domain controller is actually responding perfectly well let's now do the important part let's join this computer to the domain so what we are going to do i'm going to say this pc and also we are going to change the name of this computer to something meaningful we don't want this name that says wayne elf 39FA da, 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 da. we don't need it we need to call it node 1 so I'm gonna to go to settings right here and go to change here I'm gonna I'm, I'm going to call it node 1 so it makes some sense domain here I'm going to now specify the name of the domain ktg dot local so this is all you'll need to do and say okay so if everything goes fine it should be able to join the domain uh, so ktg uh, 
Okay, I think I should have the name to be administrator. Normally we need to create another account that should be able to do this thing, do this joining to domain instead of using the domain admin account. So I'm going to restart this system. So let's see that this system is joined onto the domain. All right, so let's log in. So login. So at this point, this system uh, should be part of the domain. Again, I like to, uh, I don't like this coming up. So I'm going to close this, close this. Okay, so you see this, I'm going to kind of adjust this by rerunning this. So what we simply need to, it will update the computer name because that is what we just changed. So I'm going to say apply. So it changes the everything updates perfectly well. Now let's now go to the domain controller and check that one system is added to the domain controller. So I'm going to go to the domain controller, go to tools and go to active directory, users and computers and let's see so if i go to computers now you can see we have node one as you can see so here you can actually manage this computer you can do a number of things uh, to be able to manage this computer now we've completed the first part of this windows server administration beginner series so we've completed this first part and i want you to be able to do this for all these other computers on your network, okay? So once you complete it, that is fine. If you have challenges, please let me know by leaving me a comment in the comment box below. I want to know, okay, cannot be managed, verify the network part is, okay, available network, firewall, okay, that makes sense to me. So what you also need to do, let me just make it clear. So this is node one. If you go to Windows Firewall, for this series of tutorials, we are going to turn off the Windows Firewall. So go to Firewall, Windows Defender Firewall, and simply uh, turn it off. So that makes our learning, our learning, uh, our learn the learning process to become seamless, and we don't have to stress so much. So we should be able to manage this computer remotely at this time, as you can see. So what we have here now is the remote computer management console. If we go to disk, uh, disk management, we can see uh, this actually is for the remote computer. So you can do a number of things. You can see the services running on this computer. Uh, you can see the services running on this computer. You can turn them on or off and you can do a whole lot of other things so as you can see right here um, i've added all the four nodes onto the active directory and that is something you should do as well so once you've come to this point i think you've done so well and we can actually continue from part two from here so you can see all the computers are joined to the active directory before we finally round off we are also going to create a user that we are going to be using to manage or to log into the computer so to create a user simply go to users and go to right click and say new and say new user and give a first name let's say me and last name now you need to specify a username as well so the username can be this and then you need to specify a password so i don't want the user to change the password so i'm going to just say next nice, finish so this is i created now i can actually try to use it to log into one of the systems for instance i can come here and maybe log out of this uh, this system and try to use the user i created so i i can come here and then let's say sign out so i've signed out i can now try to log in 
using the user I created. So I can just say, can I actually click on other user? And it says sign into KTG. And you can now enter the user you created and say the password. And let's see. So you can see that this user signs in, which is it recognizes the first name and the last name. And at this point, we are actually signing into the domain. So this is a domain account we've actually used to log in. So I think everything went uh, successfully well. So I'd like to stop here for this part one. I'll be starting part two any moment from now. Please subscribe to my channel if you've not subscribed because this is a beginner tutorial made very easy for everyone. And I would like to thank you for viewing. And remember to like and share this video. I remain kind on the tech pro and I see you in the next nice part.